Now, Silicon Valley is kind of a unique uh, place. You might say that there's a lot of collaboration here, a lot of sharing of all kinds of information. Uh, does this translate to other countries? For example, other countries have tried to replicate Silicon Valley, but uh, not too much success. Marina, what do you think about that? Do you think that uh, what we have here can be replicated elsewhere, or does it require unique conditions which we can't quite define? Marty, we discussed about that for four days during the conference, and I think we've heard all the opinions possible. To sum up, I think it would be fair to say that it's always good to take inspiration from other places, to share good practice and uh, bring good people and experienced and knowledgeable people from elsewhere to your place. But it's always very important to know exactly your place, your conditions, your situation, and try to adapt, to learn from others, but also keep in mind the specific conditions of your context. Yeah. Well, some of these problems are kind of difficult because we were talking about the Trilicious game, which is a board game. It would be nice if the world's problems could be solved as easily as moving pieces around on a board, but what the game doesn't take into account is things like the human ego, the desire of people to be above other people, the desire to gain their goals at the expense of... And this, these are the real problems, the fact that some people want what they want and they will stop at nothing to get it no matter who is in their way. Uh, are those concerns part of what you're looking into in the research? There's always a, a duality between collaboration and competition. And that doesn't mean that competition is not good. Competition is good. Competition drives forward. Competition creates more potential for advancement. But from a triple helix perspective, the real challenge and the real benefit is to create a confluence of interests rather than a divergence of interests. And one way to do that is to create win-win situations where you align the different cultures, the different interests, the different languages of the partners across the institutional spheres to align them to meet common objectives. So is it a matter of creating sort of a common culture so that everybody in this culture kind of relates in a certain way, there's certain behavior that's okay? certain things that would be too disruptive, so you don't do that? I think the underlying dimension of this dialogue is the fact that the different parties, the different partners in the discussion have different pieces of knowledge. And by putting together this various knowledge, then the team that is thus created manages to, to achieve new things, to take a step forward towards the, the objective they have set for themselves. Now, Keith, Triple Helix is one attempt to foster collaboration and innovation. Are there many other such attempts? And if so, do they complement each other or are they competing with each other? Yeah, one of the reasons I was very intrigued, I had ne never heard of the Triple Helix concept until about two years ago when I met Henry and Marina. And what intrigued me was it sounded awfully like Silicon Valley. <laughs> and in fact, you know, Henry Etzkevich just said it usually takes a, a, a crisis to make this happen. The Cold War is what led to Silicon Valley. It was partly government planning, but a lot of natural evolution. If you look at what happened here in this location in the 50s and 60s, it was a lot of government money together with universities, Stanford, Berkeley, San Jose State later, and industry, all acting together. Now, the government sort of kept at the background and just provided money. They weren't deeply involved, at least not, I mean, they were behind the scenes. But we had a triple helix model going on here. That is what, in, 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 in US terms, in Californian terms, the triple helix is Silicon Valley. We've had one for 50 years now. Now what really drives collaboration? Does that, does that start with one person who says, I have a goal and I can only achieve it if I can collaborate with other people, so let me seek out the people I need to collaborate with. Yeah. Silicon Valley is the most competitive and the most collaborative in, in place you'll find on the planet. It's totally about competition and collaboration. We compete with each other, but in a very, very collaborative. It's like playing a soccer game. You're fighting against each other but the game only works because you're actually collaborating in that game. But isn't there also a creative process? Nobody really knows where new ideas come from or why some people constantly have new ideas and most people never have new ideas. Is, is, is that the driving force of, of all progress, the fact that some people think up new ideas? Absolutely. You can have ideas coming from everywhere. It is important to have ideas and efforts to start something from 
bottom up, from top down, from sideways. Everything is possible. The world is complex. Has any research been done in how an environment can be made more conducive to ideas? Like people have tried to replicate Silicon Valley without that much success. Do we know enough about human beings to say, well, here's what will get people to come up with new and interesting ideas? There are different ingredients, you know, to creating this kind of uh, collaborative and competitive and innovative environment. And the ingredients are, of course, good education, uh, a good um, environment for learning, good communication, important flows of man money, capital. Silicon Valley has, of course, uh, the important venture capital community. And, uh, of course, the very good uh, knowledge, education potential of Stanford. So many governments, in, especially in Europe, have tried to replicate this. And uh, they've tried to put together some of the ingredients, but something was always missing. Let me ask you this, because we're running out of time. What are your most hopeful, realistic expectations of what can be accomplished through Triple Helix? What, what are your expectations of what might actually come out of it? Neither one of you can answer that. I think it's very important to recognize that uh, Triple Helix brings a new angle, a new perspective on this uh, collaboration that used to be and still is in many parts of the world a sort of exclusive uh, partnership between industry and government. Well, now we do have another player, an important player, which comes to the fore with important resources, the students, the academics, the knowledge, the research findings that get commercialized, uh, new ideas to the world, and also a better understanding of the social problems. Because most often in the corporate sector, these social aspects tend to be somehow neglected. Keith, any last reflection before we run out of time? Yeah, if you look through history, each age in history has had to be a fuel that generated things. There was coal, there was oil, we've had electricity, we've had water. We are in the knowledge society the fuel that drives that society is knowledge. And the universities are the place where you mine and create knowledge. We are the equivalent of the coal face in the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. Great, and I think that's a very good place to end the show. Uh, thank you for watching. You've been watching Future Talk with my two guests, Marina Ranga and Keith Devlin. Uh, be sure to tune in next time and visit our website, www.futuretalk.net. For Future Talk, I'm Marty Wasserman, and we'll see you next time.